So what you see me using here is just some semi quasi local shirt. It's um either comes from Western State in the Ohio or possibly a limestone deposit here that was quarried. This is the limestone. Then you have transition where it's semi tritified limestone into this nice black. Some people would know this as Upper Mercer. Um, maybe this comes from that deposit, but it's hard to tell. But when I'm using this stuff, I'm going through it and breaking off the very high glossy portions of it. Like you have your limestone, then you have <clears throat> a harder limestone, which is semi certified It's getting pretty tough, and you can use it, but I'm really after the glossy black. So I try to break flakes off that, and that's what you see me using here. Okay, so we successfully made ourselves a pattern. Not necessary, but takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, so you have consistent results. I recommend if you're not going to use a pattern, and you're just going to free willy it, make sure your back portion, if you make a shirt like this, this armpit seam, make sure that that is longer than your front one. And you can actually see on here, if you line these up, the back one's actually longer. Real quick, one really important consideration when you're laying out patterns. Um, this cotton is obviously much thinner and more flexible than buckskin. Buckskin is still very soft, but it's thick. And um, you want to consider sometimes giving yourself just a little extra because when you fold into your seams and turn your pattern back right side out, you lose uh, size when you do that. So a lot of times I like to... Um, trace my pattern at a quarter to half inch larger than I want my uh, larger than the pattern itself. That way, when I do all my folds, my stitching, and then turn it out, um, it's the right size or not too small. All right, grab yourself a pencil, this piece of charcoal. Make sure your pattern is nice and flat, ironed out. And like I said, I like to go just a little bit bigger. I pick a, fit, a shirt that I know fits and feels well, that way I know my final product is going to fit and feel pretty good. Alright, see how we did here, maybe we'll show up on camera. We got our pattern. I went about half inch bigger all the way around just to keep things simple. Flake. So this is a time I can talk real quick about buckskin itself. Depending on your needs, um, you can you can actually train buckskin while you're softening it um, somewhat to meet maybe your final goal in mind. For instance, this piece right here was frame softened while I tanned it, which usually yields a uh, more stretched out hide, one that lays flatter, um, less stretch in it. So it's a lot easier to lay patterns out on something like this that's been frame softened. Now the other half of this was hand softened, not much different but you can actually feel it. It has a little bit more um, flex to it. It feels a little thicker. And um, that's just the method of um, how I soften them. So even little nuances like that, you can um, you know, work into what your final goal in mind is going to be. So you can actually train the skin to kind of favor um, kind of what, what you have in mind for it. So. All this scrap makes really good, a good use for it. Well, you can obviously make a lot of nice sheaths and pouches and stuff. Um, a lot of times I'll take a, si a piece like this, 
and kind of trim it up, round off the corners a little bit, and I'll use it for spiral cutting a lot of my um, my lace. Shoulders are intact, necks intact, so we're gonna go with this just enough. Now I traditionally wear buckskin the way it was on the animal. That's traditionally how it's worn. Um, the smoother grain side I wear out and then the side that was against the animal, the inside I wear inside. The flesh side I wear inside. So that's how I, that's how I wear my clothes. So now this is the fun part. We get to punch all the holes. And um, I have a I have a sewing kit here. It's got quite a bit of miles on it. Um, I use it a lot. It's my go-to tool. Some of my personal tools I use a lot of. Um, and in here I have, this is a specialty punch. Um, it punches a half inch space. There's a half inch between those two holes, so you have a half inch gap between holes. But this punches two holes in one shot, which is nice. Speeds up production. Um, another variation of that I have uh, somewhere in here. Of course, these are your traditional traditional awls. Here's a smaller punch awl I use. Really good beefy um, general use one. There's a big one. And just different awls, bone awls. The big one. And somewhere in here I have right here. This comes from a deer's nasal bone. And um, that punches a 3 8 um, space. Two holes with a 3 8, three eight uh, space in between. So, gives you an idea. Now, for this application, we're going to go with the half inch spacing. Uh, very, you know, a very, um, which is plenty for a working shirt like this. You won't really see any gaps. I'll sew it inside out with what I call a whip stitch. I think that's what it's called. And um, we actually have to cut some more lace here. I started cutting it, and I'll show you how I do it. But um, you take some of your scraps, scrap piece of buckskin. You can you can pick a area of the buckskin that's very consistent, and that'll give you consistent cordage um, as far as thickness, because the hide varies throughout the hide. It actually feels different. Neck, of course, is the thickest. The belly, the belly and loins is the softest. The rump um, tends to be, um, I don't know, it's kind of flat and kind of and pretty even even thickness. And so um, I think that's about where this is, honestly. But um, just have a, another flake here. This is a pretty good quality flake. And all you do is spiral cut it, and you can get some really nice cordage. Of, I'm being mindful. I'm trying to keep a certain thickness. This is all about an eighth inch or slightly bigger. But um, you can kind of just saw at it. And if you go slow and take your time and have fun with it, um, you can get, end up with a very consistent thread like this. And um, it's very strong. I don't use... Uh, thread. I don't use really sinew or anything. I use buckskin lacing for my clothes. And see this is why I gave myself extra because you're coming in with your holes. You're losing size and then when you fold it and sew them together you're losing a little bit more size. So that's why I give myself extra. All right, guys, we're making progress. You can see how nicely the bone all 
punches your buckskin. I'll make sure they're both inside out. Now this can be tedious because you have to make sure you have plenty of thread when you do this. You have to uh, feed. I'll do the neck first. Yeah, you have to feed it through all those holes. Now you gotta feed this through all these holes. Now sometimes you put a little taper on your, your thread. I'm gonna do that right now. I'm wearing this thing out. See that you cut a cut a little point on your thread. And I use this rammer. Just a piece of bone here. It's the perfect size. It fits in my hand. I use it to feed the thread through my awl holes. It works really good. It really helps. This little tool is so nice. You just ram it through your hole, open your hole up a little bit. And sometimes just doing that gives you enough where you can just actually feed your lace right through just like that I don't have a fancy knot or anything to show you I'm just gonna A lot of times what I do is I just get a loop to tie it off, finish tying it off, I get a loop and then I go back through the loop, pull it, and uh, it's pretty good, just like that. So when you turn it right side out, a nice clean, nice clean shoulder.